chapter normal probability distribution this is section 6.2 here we're going to uh, solve some real application of normal distribution keep in mind normal distribution um, is where you know you might have uh, mean not equal to zero or a standard deviation not equal to one the standard normal distribution which we cover in section 6.1 that is a uh, distribution where uh, where you know the mean is zero and a standard deviation is one but for the for the normal distribution only you could have any mean in any standard deviation and that is very very useful while solving the real life application problem because in application problem your center or your mean could be non-zero and then mostly it's non-zero and the standard deviation is not equal to one so whenever that condition uh, you know appears uh, we can change our data x to the g score so any data set can be changed to the data set for the g score by using this formula and what happens is by doing that now the data for example let's say you have data x1 x2 x3 and then if you change that to the data C1, Z2, and G3, which is actually G score for these three data, then eventually for this data, which is data for the G score or original data, what happens is the center for this G score would be zero and then standard deviation for the G score would be one. So now we can use the very similar trick, you know, the, the, the trick we used in section 6.1, which is the standard distribution you just have to ch you just have to go from uh, normal distribution to the standard by converting the you know the, the data to the g-score okay by using this formula you can use that formula if you are doing it manually if you uh, if we are using start crunch yes definitely we are using start crunch for that uh, you know that start crunch calculator will help us to convert this thing automatically so this is your normal distribution uh, graph, as you can see here. And then we would like to change that normal distribution to the standard normal by using this G-score formula. So eventually what happens is whatever area you get, area under the curve for this X value would be very, very same. Even we change that value of X to the G-score, the area under the curve for that corresponding G score uh, would be exactly the same. So after changing this, we find the area under the curve, which is actually the probability. And then we can say that, hey, the probability for this X is similar to the probability for this G score. And that's how we try to solve, we solve the problem here. So there are different ways to solve or convert the data into the G score and then solve the problem. You can use Excel, you can use uh, the table A2 we, as we discussed in section 6.1, but we are not going to do that here. We are going to use the start crunch and it's very easy to use the start crunch, okay? So one more time, I'm going to repeat this. Um, whenever you have given area to find uh, the G-score, you can use the start crunch and from that G-score, you can convert that to the value uh, of the data, okay? Graphs are extremely helpful in visualizing, understanding, and successfully working with the normal probability distribution. So this would be used. And uh, one more time, don't be confused with the G-score versus the area like in 6.1. And then uh, choose the correct side of the graph. If it's, if it's uh, for example, let's say, uh, if you're trying to find the top 10%, so that means you are trying to go to the right side of the data. If you're trying to find the bottom 10%, then you're trying to go to the left side of the data. Uh, it's very, you know, especially this information is very uh, crucial if you are using table uh, to find the area or the G-score. But if you're using the stat counts, it's, it's, it's not a big deal, okay? And uh, G-score must be negative whenever the value is located to the left side of the normal distribution. And uh, we have to keep in mind uh, area is like probability which is always in between 0 and 1 for the normal distribution so um, so if you know the area 
And if you uh, would like to find out the value, then you can again use a, either uh, the table A2, you can use uh, StatCrunch, or you can use any other calculator. We're going to use the StatCrunch for this for this uh, class here. And this is the conversion formula going from G-score to the corresponding value. You don't have to worry about this formula applying manually because you can use the StatCrunch. But this formula is coming from this one, G-score X minus mu over standard deviation. This is the same one, okay? So let's look at some examples uh, from the homework problem. Before we start the homework problem, I'm going to start with this, um, you know, understanding questions. Question number 18, which of the following is not true? Choose the correct answer. A G-score is an area under the normal curve. No, that's not true because G-score is not the area. A G-score is a conversion that is standardized any value from, yeah. So if you want to choose one of them which is not true, the first one is not true. Where would a value separating the top 15% from the other values on the graph of normal distribution be found? Remember, the top 15% means it's, um, you have this graph, top 15% means here, area under the curve here. So this value is a top 15%. So it's other half of the, you know, normal distribution, the right side of the horizontal scale of the graph. Yeah, it's a right side. Which condition would produce a negative G-score? A uh, G-score is corresponding to a value located to the left side. A G-score is corresponding to the value located to the left side of the mean that produce negative, uh, negative value. If you are asked to find the 85th percentile, you are being asked to find an area corresponding to the G-score 0.85, uh, a data value associated with an area of 0.85, an area corresponding uh, an area corresponding to the G-score of, uh, okay, this one. We, you are asked to find the data value which is associated with an area of 0.85 to its left, not, if you're, if you're asked to find 85 percentile, so a data value is in an area 0.85 to the left. Okay, this is the right one. Because 85 percentile means, um, you know, I should use uh, some, okay. I need some blank pages here, so I'm going to insert some blank pages. Okay, so this is the normal distribution. 85 percentile means the 85 percent of the graph. So here, the area is 0 0.85. We would like to find out this value for which the 85 percentile to the left. Okay, so that's the reason of data value is with an area of 0 0.85 to the left. Okay. The weight of the chocolate in horsey kisses are normally distributed with a mean of 4.538 gram and standard deviation is 0 0.1039 gram. For the well set graph of the normal distribution of the weight of horsey kisses, what is an area under the curve? Remember, this type of problem can be solved by converting the, you know, the data into the standard normal distribution by finding the z-score for this um, data. But, uh, if you are using a stat crowns, for example, let me just uh, go and open the stat crowns here. Sorry about that. Stat crowns space and go to the question number 22 one more time. Here is the stat crowns. Go to the stat, go to the calculator, go to the normal. And now you can, this calculator is going to help you uh, to answer this question. The mean, just replace this by 4.5338. And then standard deviation is 0 0.1039. And then you would like to find the uh, what is the area under the curve. So you would like to find out the area under the curve for uh, the weight of the chocolate in the RCA are normal distribution with the mean and then standard deviation. For the bell set graph of the normal distribution of the weight of the horse, it says what is the area under the Oh, area under the curve is, you need to find the area under the curve. 
let's say if you are going from okay okay for this problem even you don't need the start crowns because the area under the curve is always you know this well set curve no matter what mu and then a standard deviation you take the area under the curve this curve is always one so that's the one what is the value of the median median and mean that's supposed to be the same uh, so that's why it's a 4.5 Okay, so that's just an understanding problem. Here we did not have to calculate one particular area, one uh, area for one particular value. It's for everything. That's why it's just uh, we don't need the start crowns for that. So let's look at some other problems. If you have mean and then standard deviation uh, given. What are the values of the mean and standard deviation for the G-score? Keep in mind, this, uh, whenever you try to convert your data to the G-score, the mean and standard deviation, mean would be zero, always it's zero, and standard deviation is one, okay? So the original pulse rate are measured with units of bits per minute. So this is uh, bits per minute. G-score doesn't have any units, so, after converting data into the G-score, uh, the G-score doesn't have any units. Okay, let me choose question number five. Find the indicated IQ score. So this is the IQ score we would like to find. The area under the curve to the right is given here. So to solve problem like this, that's where we need a start crunch. We go here, we go to the stat, we go to the calculator and then normal and we use the right value for the mean which is uh, in this case we are going to first of all we're going to look at the you know the values here with the mean 100 so just replace that by 100 and the standard deviation is 15 we would like to find out the value this value when the area is area under the curve so that means look at here we would like to find that this value less or equal such that the area under the curve is 0 0.08 0 0.08 so when you hit compute that's going to be okay greater than equal sorry about that greater than equal because we would like to find the area uh, greater than equal this value of x uh, is we would like to find the value of x such that the area under the curve uh, for the value greater than or equal x is 0 0.0808 so when you hit compute, that means it's a 79.00. If you round it to the nearest whole number, it's a 79. So the IQ score is 79. What did I do wrong here? Did I do something wrong? Let me go back and check. Uh, the mean is 100, standard deviation is 15. Mean is 100 and standard deviation is 15. Okay, here, sorry about that. That's the mistake I did. I need to use 0808, and then if I hit compute, the IQ is 120.99. If you round it to the whole number, it's 121. That was my mistake. 121, and check your answer. You understand? So, question like this. Uh, yeah, that it was a different question, but question like that can be calculated or can be solved by using stat crunch. Let's look at some other problems as well. Suppose that the heartbeat per minute of adult males has a normal distribution with a mean of 72.2 BPM and a standard deviation is 11.2 BPM. Instead of using 0 0.05 for the identifying significant values, use the criteria that value x is significantly high if probability x or greater is less or equal to 0 0.01 and significantly low if probability x or less is greater or equal to 0 0.01. So you need to find out the value of x for which the area under the curve uh, is 0 0.01. There is there are you know two times you need to use this calculator 
you have given mean so replace this value by mean which is 72.2 and uh, standard deviation is 11.2 we would like to find out the value x or greater such that the area under the curve is 0 0.01 that's 46.11 so anything less than this 46.11 has an area less than one percent so that goes here a heart rate with a bpm more than this value which is 46.1 and less than you need to find out let's put this value 46.1 anything less than this is significantly this is okay we need to find something else anything i am going here and then i need this value here 46.1 i'm going to explain you what does it mean okay anything greater than this value and then we need to find greater or equal and this one one percent again anything less than this value which is 98.3 98.3 so let's look at here a heart rate with the bpm more than 98.3 and less than 46.1 are not significant because because if you go back here 46.1 and 98 point that's the value we got right 98.3 and 46.1 46.1 and 98.3 anything greater than this is significantly high anything less than this is significantly low anything greater than this and less than this in in between that's not significant so we were asked to find out what are those two values which separates the significance value with the non-significant value so heart rate with the bpm more than 98.3 and less than 46.1 are not significant okay more than heart rate with the bpm more than 98.3 and less than 46.1 and more than 46.1 and less than 98.3 my bad 98.3 go back here anything less than 98.3 and greater than 46.1 they are not significant so where is that let's read it again a heart rate with bpm more than 46.1 and less than 98.3 are not significant excellent it's just a wording you know where you put the value Using this criteria, is a heart rate 90 BPM significantly high? If you go here, 90 is somewhere here. So that means it's not significantly high because it's uh, not significant. It's in the not significant zone. So 90 is not significantly high because it is inside the range of values that are not considered significant. Okay. Let's look at another problem. The term freshman 15 refers to the claim that college students typically gain 15 pounds during, the fresh, fresh, uh, during their freshman year at college. Assume that the amounts of the weight that male college students gain during their freshman year are normally distributed with a mean of 2.4 pounds and a standard deviation of 11.3 pounds. Find the probability that randomly selected male college student gains 15 pounds or more during his freshman year so you have to one more time go to the uh, start counts use this value mean is 2.4 and then the standard deviation is 11.3 we need to find out the probability uh, find the probability that random selector made a student gains 15 pounds or more so x greater or equal to 15 pounds or more compute the probability is 0.13. If you round it to the one decimal place, it's a 0.1. So the percentage of freshmen, uh, so if you try to change this into the percentage, that is 13.24. And if you round it to the one decimal, that is 13.2%.
So the probability that you know male student get more than 15 pound is 13.2 percent. Does this percentage suggest that freshman 50 is accurate? No, because the percentage is low. Most freshman males do not gain 15 pounds or more. Uh, this is the option I'm going to choose because you know the chances of you know gaining 15 pounds or more is just 30 percent, so it's a low. So name is not fruitful. Okay. I'm going to choose, let's say, one more random question. Question number 12. A survey found that women's height are normally distributed with the mean 63.4 and a standard deviation 2.6 inch. The survey also found that mean's height are normally distributed with the mean 69.3 inch and a standard deviation 3.6 inch. Most of the live characters employed at an amusement park have a height requirement of minimum 55 inch and maximum 64 inch. Complete part A and B below. Find the percentage of men meeting the height requirement. So remember, if you go here and we're trying to solve for the men, so let's use the information about the men. The main height uh, mean is 69 point, 69 point, um, 3 and then standard deviation is 3.6 inch. And uh, to work at amusement park, the height requirement is minimum 55 and maximum 64. So go to the between minimum 55. The height supposed to be minimum 55 and maximum 65. For this mean and for this standard deviation, what's the percent is, it will be inside this range. Compute, that's from 55, this is the between, okay? From 55 to 65 with the mean 69.3, the percentage is 11.6 inch, 11.61 inch. Remember, this is a decimal form. You have to change it to the percentage. You can do that by moving this, uh, uh, by multiplying this by 100, and that is, that is 11.6. So the percentage of men who meet the height requirement is 11.6. Uh, what happened? Find the percentage of men meeting the height requirement. What does the result suggest? Uh, most of the live character employed at amusement park have height requirement of minimum 55 and maximum 64. And then for the mean 69.3, and then what did I do wrong here? Mean 69.3, and then a standard deviation is 3.6. So the percentage in between uh, 55 to 64, sorry. I use 65 that's supposed to be 0 0.07 so that is if you multiply it by 100 it will be 7.04 sorry i instead of using instead of using 64 i use 65 that was my mistake <clears throat> okay since the most men do not meet only seven percent of the men they meet that criteria the height requirement, it is likely the most of the character are women because most men, only 7% of the men, they, they uh, fulfill that, uh, that criteria. If the height requirement are changed to exclude only tallest 50% of the men and shortest 5% of the men, what are the new height? You have to use the very same calculator. Instead of between, now we're going to use the standard. We want to find out what is the area, what is the uh, height for the <clears throat> only the tallest 50%. So what is the, the height which is a tallest 50%? So less or equal, uh, you know, the area is tallest 50% means it's a 50% of the data. So that is 69.3. Uh, if the height requirement are changed to exclude only the tallest 50% of the men and shortest 5%. So the new height requirement are, the maximum is 69.3. That's the tallest, right? 69.3, if you want to exclude 50%. 
and then minimum is five percent so uh, you know five percent lowest five percent so less or equal we need zero five so you know lowest five percent is 63.37 anything less than that is in five percent zone 63.4 if you round it to the one decimal place 63.4 the new height requirement are minimum of 63.4 and maximum of 69.3 okay okay 